Let's move on to item number eight, which is unfinished business. This is an ordinance number 1624, parenthesis 16, uh, summary of action approving ordinance regulating shopping carts. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council, and colleagues. Patrick Weinler uh, here to talk about the uh, shopping post shopping corridor cart ordinance. We had a first reading uh, two meetings ago, and uh, after uh, hearing uh, public comments and concerns, you asked that we um, wait, uh, that we hold over and not bring back for second reading on the last meeting, but rather wait until this meeting to bring that forward to a forward us time and me time to notify potential affected businesses. While we don't have a comprehensive list, uh, we don't know of one's existence of every uh, business that has or might have carts, we uh, did our best effort to try to identify the potential businesses in town that would be affected. Uh, we identified uh, 46 different businesses that we subsequently notified um, provide a written notice of the second hearing to be heard at this point. Uh, there was no other uh, action that you took in the uh, first during the first reading. So as it stands right now, the uh, the draft ordin ordinance is still unaltered, and uh, we're available for your continuation of the discussion at this point. Okay, Councilman Hondo, Patrick. In your study before, and uh, what, re what recommendations come from the card owners themselves? Was there anything that came forward in the last two, two weeks or so? Could, well, some yeah, of we had some, uh, some real good statements that may work out. Yeah, well, uh, um, in the interim, uh, there have been um, suggestions made here at council by uh, members of the public and including, I believe, some, uh, some of the owners, and then uh, I, I believe shared with you was at least one and maybe a two correspondence that we got from private citizens of, of uh, options that are available. Um, some of those echo uh, some of the options we knew were available. For instance, I think one of the written suggestions was about having a token-driven uh, system certainly up to the individual owners if they're looking to keep carts on site that's one possibility um, there's technology that's available uh, so yeah I, I mean we haven't we as staff we haven't we we, we received we we're aware of the suggestions we haven't done any uh any further analysis or anything we're following your your lead well, that's why I said we had we probably received some today, had some good ideas. Other uh, I had comments from others out there that there is some way to I think everybody's more concerned about the thousand dollar fine, but also the property owner of those uh, cars you don't have to have be involved. We had some good comments on how to do it, so I'd like to have it probably come in course some recommendation how we can put it together. Other than just what we have here today, because I think you've done a real good job on it, but just having a pen day. I think the one where they talk about the, about the quarter or dime or whatever to get the car out, and then when you get back, put the car back, get your money back. Then there's one of uh, a Ross for less, I believe, so we told me today they have one where the car won't leave the building, so it, it stopped. So there is some out there. It'd be nice to have the car owners come in with. A recommendation they would uh, support, and we could modify it too. I think we're doing everything we can, but they're the ones that also have those carts. And I don't know how that would work. We had a workshop or what? Sure. Just just to recap, we had, um, staff, staff was following uh, the, what the request was that we re received. As I understood it, uh, multiple council members were receiving complaints about carts that were left abandoned out, out in the community and they were hearing a lot clear from some citizens that were uns dissatisfied with that situation. And in our attempt, uh, as, as you'll recall from the first reading, 
Uh, we reviewed some 31, the policies that are in place in some 31 different communities and put together a, a draft of an ordinance that we thought would be effective in getting the carts from, you know, out from being abandoned out in the community. Um, in, and um, you know, one of the discussion points has been, has focused on the, the $1,000 uh, citation fine issue again our goal and desire is to never have to assess any such fine uh, that would happen only if we had uh, you know someone who uh, you know a, a, an owner who refused to have a plan in place refused to enact and uh, take responsibility on re helping to retrieve uh, the carts uh, while we did listen and we have continued to take notes on the inputs that have come from the uh, citizens, again, we received our instruction from, from you. So we appreciate the contributions of ideas. Some of them have been uh, good, good suggestions that are there. Uh, we'll look forward to either continue on with the draft that's in hand or to continue on with adjustments based upon how, how you act and direct. Thank you. Okay, um, okay I'm, I'm going to make a couple of points here. I guess this probably happened well over a year ago that a couple of council members had people approach them. Uh, there's never been a council request, any type of motion on the dais about that. Once again, we're at government and business. Oxymoron. We need to be out of it. There's a state law that pertains to the whole state, the Business and Professions Code. Now, we can sit around and talk about tokens and community service and all that, but we're still involving ourselves. The people that own the carts will police themselves. People that steal the carts will be policed by police. That's what the Business and Profession Code says. I don't know why we're going to go angle me hip deep on this when there's already a state law. It's very clearly spelled out. We received this email from our code enforcement on, like I said, last meeting, April 22nd. It, it's, I don't, I don't get it. We should drop it. We shouldn't do the ordinance. If we're gonna enforce it, we should direct the chief of police. Let's enforce business and professions code, this section here. The only requirement that this puts on the merchant is to identify his cart. That's the only thing that would be required by the merchant or the businessman. So that when the car is found or spotted, they can be notified of it. If they do not respond within three days, then the car can be confiscated. I don't know anybody that will not pick up their car if they were told about it. Or the car retrieval people that could do it all, you know, for people that don't go out on their own. Let's not mingle in it. In Lompoc here, uh, providing a service and providing uh, the ability for people that are low income and handicapped to to take their groceries home. So I think I, I tend to think that if if these businesses at least have a, a, a communication with code enforcement as far as having some sort of cart retrieval process. To me, that would be good enough. You know, if these people, uh, I believe it's their personal property, and I think that they would want to get that, have those carts returned so that more customers um, could utilize these things. You know, the other part of it is, okay, uh, after speaking to quite a few people, you know, they also, you might even think about, you have your carts there in the store, but if someone wants to take these maybe offer some of these smaller carts for sale or something, you know, these little smaller carts that you see at the swap meets or used to see at the swap meet, uh, for them, for more on a personal basis, maybe uh, encourage them or maybe make that part of your inventory, you know, instead of uh, expecting them and wondering whether they're gonna uh, take your cart. I think you guys kind of know that the people without cars are, are gonna take the cart home, okay? I mean, it's a blight to the city. Uh, again, there's already communication uh, with recycling uh, businesses that they've been kind of asked not to accept uh, recycles. 
that are being brought in with somebody else's shopping cart. It's kind of like somebody else's vehicle, okay, so to speak. So I think probably more on the community side of policing and being proactive toward the business side of Lompoc, I think. I think you guys already have enough struggles, and I don't know of anybody out there that says they don't want their cart back, okay? If they don't have a plan or they don't have a phone number posted or if they have something. So if code of enforcement did have some issue with, hey, 10 carts in the corner that no one's ever called, part of the community policing that we could do is say, hey, they could pick up the phone and say, hey, we have this, this kind of a cart retrieval process on file and, and, and just do the right thing like we would do for somebody else that lost their personal property and you try and get hold of the right people. So that it wouldn't result in a fine a filing fee or an extra charge. That's kind of my, I think that would probably go a lot farther as far as um, supporting our businesses. Okay, um, I'd like to, I have plenty of things I want to say about this, but I'd like to hear from the public before we go on. Unless any council member has something to say. Okay, so we're going to open this up for public comment. We have three minutes. My name is Sandra Klaus, and um, I'm a resident of Lombok. And I thank you, thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I have a little handout for you. Um, I sent an email, so it's kind of a duplicate. And I attached some other information that may be of interest to you in the future. Um, the reason I'm here is I believe that uh, the shopping cart issue impacts the entire community because businesses would have to increase the cost of product um, in order to cover the cost of the fines. And I think that we all, you know, would like to have um, the prices kept down. Um, I also feel that uh, the city has a unique position uh, by having the city economic development department to help work with businesses um, in an open environment to help resolve or look at different options available um, to resolve the shopping cart issue. I, I took the time to kind of research that in order not to stigmatize just any particular population, but to help the community at large. Um, I did a request through Chris to uh, show a 33 second video. And um, so if, um, and so I'm just asking that you hold it over and assign it and give it a little more time before your vote. And uh, that's it. Okay. You have a 33 second video? That could be part of your three minutes. That's right. Okay. Thank you, sir. So Chris, you want to show The idea behind the, the coin op was actually um, given to me by a lady when I was volunteering at the um, uh, library book sale. And um, I guess she said it was something that worked, but I did go to Wikipedia and find out there was a $9 million loss in shopping carts worldwide. So it would be nice for long folks to set a precedent of that. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Next question. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Council members, public at home. Uh, 
Wayne, you mentioned earlier in the meeting today that you wanted to hear from... Oh, speak your name, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Eric Crocker. Uh, I'm a resident of Lompoc and a business owner of uh, the Lompoc First Reality. Uh, Dwayne, you mentioned earlier in the meeting today that you wanted to hear from local business owners that we need to have some kind of solutions brought from us regarding this issue. And I'm just curious if you remember me here two weeks ago along with my wife presenting a number of solutions. Okay. Uh, did anybody get my email that I sent about a week ago? With the, okay. Okay, good. Glad to do that. Uh, we've offered up a lot of solutions with this. Um, our stance is that we just need to do away with this, as, as Derek stated earlier, and get back to square one and figure something out. I like Victor's solution. It's very simple. Uh, we just need to have a plan in place in order to set this, this complicated precedent with the number of fees and everything else. Uh, I've talked to most of you already, and you know my stance on this whole issue. Um, I'm just asking that we move forward with something that takes the business owners and the uh, community into account, rather than trying to push something through uh, regardless of our input. And I know that's what this meeting is for here, but uh, when we were contacted uh, a month ago, this was stalled, and it was asked that we get a hold of the local businesses and talk to the people that are directly affected by this ordinance. And I was excited to hear that. I was thinking, oh great, and this first of all is the first I've heard about this, so I'm sure glad we stalled it. Uh, and secondly, great, the uh, city's going to get a hold of us and we're going to come up with you know, some kind of solution and put our heads together and figure this out. And then in the mail, I get a letter that is essentially a copy of the ordinance and an invite to this meeting. And that's it. So it didn't seem like that was a good solution to figuring this out, working with us, putting our heads together to come up with a solution or, or running this by us. It was more, hey, show up to this meeting if you, know, you want to have a say in this and uh, you want to make your vote count. But beyond that, it, it didn't feel like uh, much involvement from our side of things. So I ask that we cancel this ordinance and move forward with something that involves the businesses a little better and uh, something more fun. I mean, you've heard a lot of the feedback, I'm sure, from the community by now. A, a number of you have been approached, emailed. If you're on the Lompo forums, they can be a little tedious at times, but there are a number of good suggestions and a lot of feedback on there. And I think this is something that, if passed, uh, it's, it's just not going to be a good look. So I appreciate your time. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Mr. Carter, just yes. a couple of questions sure. real quick. Have you ever been approached by a car retrieval service? I have, yes. Uh, actually, before the initial council meeting where they had a presentation, and I thought that was a little odd that I was approached by them in regards to having them as a third-party car service. I explained that I pick up all of our carts. Uh, I drive around in our truck, and you've probably seen our truck, and I think it's just good community advertising and, and community involvement where I'm, I'm in the alleys, there's people there, I talk to one, it's got the logo on the side of the truck, so we look at it as a way of, of advertising the business and just community involvement. You know, we shake our neighbor's hand saying, hey, they're not the ones taking the car, they live across the street, they see me grabbing the car, they roll their eyes, and all that's my neighbor. But I, I do see a guy going around picking up cars, but not yours. Oh, right. And so I know that some of the, the merchants in town have engaged this service. But I mean, just I, it, is it something that's feasible for you to continue to go pick out, pick up your own carts? It hasn't been an issue yet. Uh, I think the biggest issue is that, that they keep walking away. But part of that is, uh, as Victor mentioned, some of our lower income families end up taking a cart home because they don't have any more transportation. Um, I think with what we're trying to do here in the community and moving forward is finding other solutions for these individuals and these families to be able to get their groceries home uh, in a manner that doesn't necessarily require a cart, but right now that's the only option. So, yeah, I think it's feasible for me to continue doing it. It hasn't been an issue yet. Do you ever pick up anybody else's carts in return? I actually have once, yeah. Uh, just one time. Um, that was complicated involving our cart and uh, a, a homeless individual not wanting to give one of our carts back. So I had, I had another <laughs> car that I was going to offer him. It was this complicated thing and uh, ended up having to get the police involved because we do do that if, if we have to. Uh, and 
cops came out. I spent about an hour outside an alley while they got our cart back. I thought it would be a little simpler than that, but we got the cart back, and then I returned the one that I had in my possession over to our buddies at Walmart. Sure, if I could. Um, obviously, you must have a, some sort of account for how many carts you have, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of approximately. I mean, it is a cost of doing business for you guys. So you guys do want your personal property back. So well, other people can't use it. Okay, so I'm just not sure, you know, on your inventory when you do this, um, how do you know? You, you guys know when 10 carts are missing. You don't know where they're at, obviously, but right. you know that someone took them. And, you know, so part of knowing what's missing is knowing what you have, you know, that would be part of what I would suggest you guys just have your own little plan. That's why I had to ask. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm not sure if everyone does that, but, you know, they know that they have 100 carts, so they, and if there's 10 missing and 10 never came back, you know? Yeah. Kind of nice, or, or 10, I don't care because I still have 90, you know, so we're fees, these filing fees on top of just the plan itself. I mean, is I get I think it's the legalese where it just needs to be very specific with all the things that are outlined in this plan. But it's just the amount of time that we're going to spend writing up this plan. Then we have to give a report annually on this plan and submit that as well. And then if the report finds that our current uh, methods are not doing very well, we need to come up with alternative solutions and amend our plan and have all this on file with the city and it just becomes this convoluted thing that I, I don't think we need to mess around with. Right. To find a better solution. Thank you so much. Sure. sure. Next one. Good evening, City Council Mayor. Um, I just wanted to reiterate our feelings from the last meeting uh, that the proposed ordinance for the shopping cart issue just doesn't seem like it's going to be the best solution that we could come up with. Um, we, I feel like it will be negatively affecting local businesses, us included. I'm sorry, my name is Alex Crocker, <laughs> um, and I am one of the owners of the grocery outlet here in town as well. Um, I think that if we do go forward with this ordinance as proposed, that it will also uh, encourage additional shopping cart theft on top of what already is an issue for us and all the other businesses in town because um, it, it may set the precedence that it's okay to steal the shopping carts and that um, the business will take care of it, the business will get fined for it and, and we don't have to worry about it as, um, as citizens taking the carts. Um, so I just ask that you consider some alternatives um, as council member uh, Vega mentioned and uh, council member Starbuck mentioned that um, there, there's definitely lots of options uh, besides this ordinance. Um, and uh, we do absolutely agree that the carts are an issue in the city. Uh, we, I mean, as Aaron mentioned, we drive around and pick up those carts and we see the stacks of carts from the other businesses as well. Um, and, and it is an issue, but um, finding the businesses I don't think is the right solution, and, and finding the people that are having a hard time I don't feel like is, is going to be a great solution either, um, although that is in place in the, in the state that it is illegal for them to be taking them. It's, it's kind of like trying to get blood from a stone. Uh, if they're having a hard time already, it's not going to be beneficial for anybody involved. So, um, I just ask that you reconsider and that we work together and find a different solution. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. Hi, uh, my name is Jason Turner. I've lived in this town for years. Uh, my two main points is, one, in the 12 or so years that I've lived here, shopping cart has never been a problem for me. I've never been driving down a roadway and been blocked by a shopping cart. I've never been walking and have one impeding my uh, progress. Um, I'm an adult. If I were to see a cart in my way, I can push it out of the way. You know, it's not been a big issue for me. And um, the ordinance that we are discussing today doesn't seem like it would address the problem because it seems to be uh, a symptom of other issues like poverty 
and um, it doesn't really seem like it would impact the um, the other issues. Uh, I think also that if um, we as a community really feel so strongly affected by random parts in our community that we as a community should pay for it, maybe we could uh, do any number of other solutions um, that I've heard, but one that I haven't heard other people mention is we could raise income or uh, sales tax and earmark that for cart collection or paying for carts for people that are to board a Ford car, maybe. We could uh, do anything like that, but this it doesn't seem like it would fix the problem. Um, and, um, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Next, please. I'm a little taller, sorry. Hi, I'm Mike Sewell, a, a longtime resident, actually born and raised in Mambo. And I just wanted to come again before the council and ask you to please, please uh, respectfully vote this down. Um, there's a couple things that uh, that government kind of gets trapped in, and one thing is when they've done a lot of work on a project to to put, put together, put staff time in, and it, you know, it's already cost the taxpayers some dollars. They say, well, we've done all this work, we don't want to vote it down because we've done all this work, and that's great. But when there's a bad idea, you just gotta call it a bad idea, and it's okay. We all have bad ideas. I have bad ideas every day. Um, and I just got to say, you know, if that's a bad idea, let's move on, move on to the next one. And then there's a second problem that government sometimes gets into, and they get this idea that, well, we can put this law on books, but, you know, we're never going to use it. We'll find another solution, and we'll just have another in case there's like a really big problem maker, and we'll really punish that person. Well, that puts in the idea that you have this law on the book, and you can pick and choose who to punish and who not to punish. And I think that's a bad precedent to set for any law. And even though it's more, it's basically a law. You can enforce it by, by fines. And um, the third thing I want to say is, you know, please reflect that I was here last time. And it seems like every single person, unless I'm mistaken, that came to speak to you guys was against this. So hopefully you can take the will of the people into I'm sure you've been talking to people outside of this as well. If they've been telling you things I'm sure you've been on Facebook, and I'm sure you're really sorry you were on Facebook for this issue because it's a pretty hot issue right now. Um, but also, I just think we need to pull it back and let the community fix this problem instead of government. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, my name is Penny Campfield. I'm a long court president. I was here last time also to speak against this ordinance. So I just again ask that you vote no for this. Um, in the instance that you do vote yes, I would like for you to specifically state that the fine would only be for people who are consecutively leaving their cards out, not picking up, refusing, because like the last gentleman said, we don't want um, you know to pick and choose who is going to be fined or not. Um, I'm a homeless advocate in the community. I volunteer a lot um, through the Advocacy and Action Committee, which we did invite a couple of you guys to come to. Um, and we've talked about this issue, and um, I wish you guys would have been here because there was a lot of community input. Um, we hold it every third Wednesday of the month at Coast Valley, um, over by Flor behind Florianos. And a lot of people came you know, to talk about how it affects the poor and the homeless um, in the community. So I feel like if we need to resolve this community policing is the best way. I did um, tag a couple of you in a Facebook post um, where it's already happening, the ones I could find on Facebook. Um, there were some community members, I believe they were calling them missionaries, that were going around town and picked up, it seemed to be about 30 cars. And there was a big response from the community. So even though this ordinance was frustrating to me originally, it's already started a ripple effect of positivity in the community. We've seen people, you know, people went out and they offered these guys pizza and water, you know. So people are, they got the point and I think it's going to be resolved. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Next please. Good evening, Council. My name is Shane Berg. I am a uh, resident of Lompo. Uh, my first preference would be Mr. Starbucks idea. Just keep the city out of it. That's the way to go. Barring that, I would like to propose a second alternative. And that's a two-part plan to rid this uh, whole issue. The first part is to incentivize the public to pick up these cards. 
for a 25 to 50 cent per cart credit to their utility bill, people would be incentivized to go out and pick up carts. They would then turn them back or go back to the owners of the carts, have a document signed that they brought back 25 carts, bring that to the utility counter, and they get a credit, 25 to 50 cents on, for each cart on their utility bill. Now, how do you pay for this? That's part two. One way, one penny per cart by the owner for uh, how many carts are turned in. This keeps them from having to, or signing off documents saying, yeah, I got back 5,000 carts when I only have 100 carts in my store. So we have the, the fraud kept down that way. The second way is a small fine to those caught taking the carts off the premises of the uh, owner. Ten dollars per cart or per time of caught with a shopping cart. Ten dollars will not break the bank. I've been poor. I've been there. I've scraped money together and we had to walk to work every day because I didn't have gas money. Ten dollars is a very small fee, but ten dollars would pay for twenty carts picked up. We could easily pay that uh, that fee that way. We would have people incentivized to go out and pick up the carts, turn them in, keep them our city clean. We would pay for it by penalizing those who steal the carts. Let's be honest, it's theft. It doesn't belong to them. If they would turn them back in, people probably wouldn't be as concerned about it. But they don't turn them back in, they just leave them sitting around when they get home. That's the way I, I see it. It's very simple to do. It wouldn't cost the city anything to do it. It wouldn't cost the companies much to do it. It would put the onus back on the person who's selling the carts instead of risking the businesses paying thousands of dollars to upgrade all of their carts and then turn around and increase their costs, which will then drive some of these businesses out of town because they can't afford this. And now we've lost tax revenue because we don't have the businesses anymore. And the people who are taking the carts are hurt, hurt the worst because there's no businesses now for them to go shopping and take the carts home with them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council members, good evening. Good evening. Interesting meeting tonight. Um, I'm opposed to oh, Dan Carr. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm opposed to the ordinance, and the three issues that I have are: I agree with Mr. Starbuck that the residents are kind of a third party here. We don't really have a dog in the fight as far as whether there's carts on the street. Um, and the key actors are the retail businesses. So my question is. Um, why haven't we got the chamber involved? Where Mr. Astini is here, perhaps you could say what the chamber has discussed. This, all these people are probably members of the chamber, so there's already a network in place for the, the chamber, um, for local issues, and for the chain stores, for franchisee uh, options with their, their franchisors. Um, I feel very strongly that the ordinance just shuts down shopping carts and really doesn't address the need for the shopping carts, why they're walking away. And um, so I, I want to volunteer to seek out other people who want to do recycling. And she has a little plastic wagon that she put a storage bin and you know, fixed it in. And um, she pulls that around. And that's not an expensive option. So for people who do want to do recycling, um, maybe that's something we, as a community, could do is help those people with some kind of conveyance, because that's what it is as a conveyance. Um, I'm also concerned that uh, I, I didn't see a lot of data, and I did talk to Cy at the uh, cart retrieval company, and he said last year, 2015, 2,810 uh, carts were retrieved. That's about 54 carts per week. That's a lot of carts. Um, but what we don't know is where the carts are ending up, what neighborhoods. And that's one way, if we have that information, that's how we can evaluate our bus service. Maybe the problem is a hole in the bus service in certain neighborhoods um, and, and other things. So um, I, I attached a map there that I asked Cy if this was something that the subcontractor here could uh, maybe participate in. There's a map there, they could mark where they pick up a cart on the map and what store it's from, we can kind of see the migration and uh, just an option. So um, 
I'd be willing to put in time and, you know, envelopes and provide copies for the maps and all that. I'd be willing to put in that. It's important, I think, for the community to support people who don't have the resources. Um, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Speaker of the panel. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, City Staff, Ken Austin, you on Blue Valley Chamber of Commerce. I am speaking on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce tonight. Um, are abandoned shopping carts a nuisance in our community? Sure they are. I think everybody knows that. Is this ordinance the answer? No, it's not. Uh, hopefully you all have had an opportunity to read that thing thoroughly. I read it and 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 there's some things in there that just amaze me. Uh, I'm amazed by the fact that there's a, a part of it where people don't even have shopping carts. I have a requirement to have a storage area for abandoned shopping carts in their area. I, I, I was just kind of dumbfounded by that. Um, I like the ideas and suggestions that we get the stakeholders involved. If we need an ordinance in our community, then let's get the stakeholders to sit down in a workshop and develop an ordinance that works for everybody, not just something that the city wants to propose. So th that's my recommendation to you is if we need to do this, and you agree we need to do something, then let's get the stakeholders involved and put together something that works for everybody, not something that's just forced down our throats. Because one side effect of this, if it does go through, as written, and the financial impacts on our businesses, we'll have a financial impact on our community, because that will have an impact on the giving they give to all the different organizations in, in this community year round, and that's probably hundreds of thousands of dollars of giving by these businesses. So. Uh, please relook this. If you must have something, let's get folks involved that are part of are part of the uh, of the situation. Thank you. Thank you. So I speak from a little bit of history. Uh, I have to agree with all the speakers, and I think most of you on the council, and that we probably don't pass this ordinance. I think we uh, have an overkill for a small problem. But if you do decide, I would ask you that you exempt the 31 small businesses that are on the list that may or may not have. A large quantity of carts because they don't need one more report to fill out and they don't need to store carts for others. One of the biggest problems in shopping carts, and I dealt with it when I was mayor, was the cart retrieval service can't find them. You know, they don't have a little radio collar on. You can't you can't go to it. And I have a friend who actually did it for a while in Santa Barbara and he cried the blues about trying to chase them down and how many they lost because they simply couldn't find them. But there are some solutions out there. So if we feel we have to do something, and I'm hoping that you don't, number one, the carts should have the name of the store on them if they don't. Number two, they should have the address of the store, so if somebody felt like they wanted to return it, they would know where to take it. And they would have a phone number where someone could call if they found the abandoned cart, and an email address if they wanted to email in, which everyone younger than I am wants to do. And finally, if, uh, if the business is served by the California Shopping Cart Retrieval Service, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of the California Grocers Association. You can put a QR logo, that's that funny little little squiggle, and they have a system where if you have an iPhone and you see a cart with a squiggle, you walk up to it and you take a picture and automatically it forwards the picture and the GPS coordinates of the cart to the cart retrieval service. And that's a pretty amazing bit of technology. So who would that affect? Well, the car receivable retrieval service currently handles the 99 cent store, Albertsons, CVS, Dollar Tree, Foods Co., Marshalls, Michaels, Petco, Staples, Vons, Walmart, and Walgreens. So they serve 12 of the 15 large providers and shopping carts within the city. Now, I did speak to them about the service that they provide. It's provided out of Santa Maria, and I suggested to them that Perhaps they need to come a little more often and be a little more diligent. But again, they said to me the same thing they said to me the number of times I've talked to them before, which is, we need help finding them. If you would help us, that would be good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council, Phil Schuyler, uh, Sitting back reminiscing a little bit here. Uh, most of you know the League of California City has various policy committees, and I was on one of the policy committees, and shopping carts came up. 
Uh, we had quite a few meetings on it, and uh, actually we had a, uh, a police chief on our committee, and we ended up there that the uh, shopping center cart would be considered a vehicle. So if it's parked in the street and it's an obstruction in the street, then an officer could come by and order it towed and impounded because it was a traffic hazard or a hazard to the community. If it was on private property, then it's on private property and we go, the cart is a piece of private property. So, you know, why would the law enforcement be interested in it? Uh, unless it's abandoned property and that the owner then would have to file for abandonment on it. And we went round and round for a long time. And we finally figured, you know, it's a statewide problem. Why don't we turn it to the state? And thank you very much, Mr. Star I call Mr. Starbuck, for doing your homework and find out that there is a state law on shopping cart, and it came out of the policy committee of the League of California City. So the discussion you're having tonight, I had over eight years ago in a policy committee. So it's not in your hands. Uh, we also ruled that if you did arrest it, you'd have to arrest the cart and Mirandaize it. And we didn't really see that going very well. Uh, okay, anyone else? Okay, seeing no rise, we're going to close our communication or public comment and bring it back to the council. If you'd indulge me for a few minutes. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone that spoke. Uh, we have I speak for the entire council. We have taken note of everything we've said, all of the information we've received. We've received phone calls, we've received emails, we've received written reports uh, here today, uh, numerous ones, and we have taken note. One of the things I've made a note to myself, just in the past, it's been a month now, I guess. Can we have a person? A month? Yeah. A month. We have noticed a difference. Someone mentioned it today. Just the idea of talking about it has made a difference. Okay? Um, now, other than maybe the council or Starbuck, I don't know, does anyone else on the council feel that we don't have a problem in the city? Do we feel that we do not have a problem? Okay, and I think everyone out there said that there, there is a problem. I mean, yeah, I think you've all admitted that there is a problem. And somehow you all have suggested ways of getting it addressed. Okay. So, since I believe we all kind of agree that there is a problem, let me try and take the ordinance we have right now, try to incorporate what I've heard from you, and see if we can come up with it. It's going to take me a little while because I'm going to go through the ordinance. For those of you that haven't read it, you're going to hear it right now. Mr. Um, Mayor, can we finish discussion on this? I mean, I know you wanted to go already, but after we heard public comment, I don't know if we would be allowed to have to discuss. Well, of this is, this is, this is my before, before, you, before you step, sure, step forward with that, maybe right. we can. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I guess my question to the city manager is uh, that the, the document in the business and professions code section that uh, Councilman Starbuck has, is there a reason why we don't work with this? Did you feel there were too many holes, or I mean, are we trying to enhance it? I'm not familiar with that. Okay, it, it did. I had said short time to read on it. It did uh, declare it as a misdemeanor for the carts uh, for somebody to be stealing a cart. But it's if there, there seems to be a lot of teeth in this already. There seems to be adequacy, Mr. J. Attorney. You can when, when this matter was first brought to you, the secretary explained that, that we understood that that law was existed. And we also understood that what we were trying to do was not have the city become the um, entity that had to go out and enforce that law. And so we didn't take the approach of relying on that law because that law, the way it's implemented is the city has to then go out and either have the police department arresting people or taking, taking ownership of the carts and then the city has to have the cart stored somewhere and then if the city wants to um, destroy the cart, they have to give notice to the cart owners. And so we didn't think that that's what the council was looking for, was for the city to take on more of the responsibility of how to take care of the carts, which is what would need to happen if we followed that state law. So if we pass this ordinance, then our ordinance would supersede state law? It wouldn't supersede. The state law allows cities to do what was being suggested. 
with this ordinance. But, and then, but would we still be required by law to uphold this law? We're not required to enforce that law. We're not required to enforce this law. How, how, how do we pick and choose and why, why we don't enforce this state law? How does that work that we have to do? The same as any state law. The, the, the city is not obligated to enforce any law. The city has a limited budget, all cities do. They decide what um, matters are important and focus on, and this was brought to you because there was a, a request by council members to bring to do something with shopping carts issues that were felt to be occurring in the city and so we put together an ordinance that without be effective without having the city take on the responsibility for having to collect the cards on the streets have a place to hold the cards and have a way to notify people and then have to destroy the cards if the cards weren't um, retrieved so then i guess what you're saying is this the the state law would be more burdensome on the city and so that we that's why we this was drafted up, it's a little more burdensome, or well, I don't know how you call it, more on the, uh, the owners of the carts. More, make them assume more responsibility. That's what, that, yes. Okay. One of the things is, we noticed, or we heard today from our police chief, we have to call in an extra crew today. Now, this is an unusual day. I mean, if we put all the responsibility on our police officers to be out there issuing citations, to the people that steal the car. Um, and we've heard from people that maybe it is what we want to do. Maybe we don't want to uh, be penalizing the person that doesn't have the, the vehicle. Um, so are we going to ask our police officers to, uh, a mother with three kids pushing the car down on the street, and the police officer rolls up and unloads the uh, groceries onto the sidewalk? Um, picks up the car and issues a five dollar fine or whatever. It is. I don't think that's what we want our police officers to do. Anyway, no. Does anyone else want to say anything, or I'm gonna? Okay. So let me see if this works. And uh, Mr. Crocker, I'd like you to, to comment on it too. Is when we're done. Normally, we're done with public comment, but um, I believe you are the only grocery. Are there any other business owners that have shopping carts in the audience? Okay, so when you hear this, if you if you like it, you don't like it, I, I appreciate your comments on it as well. Okay, so the council can sort of follow by, I'll go through the page by page with us. Um, first page is no change, no change on it, it's just we're having a public meeting, the discussion why we're going to be doing it. Let's go to the third page, which is the ordinance. Whereas is whereby, um, just why we're doing it again. Let's go down to the very last two paragraphs where it talks about definitions. Um, abandoned shopping carts prevention plan. Okay. I want to make sure that everyone realizes that we're not going to require a cost for anyone to, Mr. Crocker was right. In this ordinance, there was going to be a fee when the uh, grocery store or the shopping center uh, provided a plan to us, we were going to charge you a fee for filing that. That's going to be omitted if what I'm presenting goes through. Um, so that fee is gone. On the um, second page, uh, it talks about the different options. If you look at the fourth paragraph, it talks about the physical parameter. Now, um, bonds has the physical parameter. That's one of the options that people can come up with. I, I like that. Let's go down to the third paragraph in the bottom. It talks about shopping carts identified, identifying signs shall mean a sign engraved surface permanently affixed to the shopping cart, which includes all the following information, the shopping cart owners, name, business address, telephone number, um, and the following lang language in capital letters. Unauthorized removal of the shopping carts from this premises is prohibited by law, which goes that, and it references the Code. Uh, Mr. Crocker, I believe you said that this would be very expensive for you to affix this to the cart. So I'm going to recommend with what I'm saying, let's eliminate that. The, the um, ordinance would not have you mandatorily affix that to it. I think it's 
to your advantage to have some identifying information, like grocery outlet or bonds or something on there, but we're not going to require you to put anything on there. Okay. Um, on the next page, we're talking about shopping cart identification. Oh, yeah, again, requires. We're going to eliminate that. You're not going to be required to have pay for those identifying signs on there. Just some minor changes in the third paragraph from the bottom where it talks about when, it's, when this is going to take effect. I just changed it from October 31st to December 31st, 2016. Just gives us a bunch of time. The last paragraph, um, an inventory of all cars. Part of the plan would be, uh, well, let's, this whole paragraph. I am going to say that I would, I think we should have a, Every one of you pre uh, prepare a shopping cart prevention plan, okay? Prevention, uh, prevention plan. So I, that's one thing I'd like to keep in there that you just come to the city and tell us what they're doing. A grocery outlet is already doing, they're picking theirs up. Bonds is already doing it. They have their um, perimeter around there. Uh, Mr. Lynn mentioned that there's 12 places that have a shopping cart service. That's their plan. They're done. All they have to do is tell us what they're doing. They're done. Okay. Um, but it's complete inventory. Let's strike that from there. Uh, you know, that's too much and they'd have to continue to do that. On um, page four, uh, community outreach. I think this is a, a good portion in there. A description of the community outreach. So this is part of your plan. A description of the community outreach process under which the owner shall cause notice to buy customers. Removal of carts from the premises is prohibited by, by law and a violation of state law. So we reference this law. So in your, in your location someplace, you'll be putting up posters or something in your store where your shopping carts are. Just a sign there saying, removal from the premises is against the law and reference the code. Um, um, I have number F on here. Um, it's a big, long paragraph. It says it must be removed within 24 hours, evidence of the contract having. I'm going to take that responsibility off you. I'm going to leave it up. If you say it, let's police yourselves. Okay, so um, a plan to retrieve abandoned shopping carts by the owner for evidence of a contract with the shopping cart retrieval service. That's all this paragraph would say. A plan to retrieve it, the abandoned carts, for um, a contract with the service. Um, okay, let's go to the page five, on member C. Um, okay, the uh, shopping cart removal plan is sufficient or inadequate to, oh, these are reasons for denial, where the city manager would be able to deny it. Okay. Um, it's sort of arbitrary, but I think we have to have some reason why the city manager can be denied. You can't just say, um, they, they come back to me, my, my, all my shoppers bring them back to me. Just, okay, what happens if they don't? So just some sort of an idea that you are going to bring them back. Uh, evaluation report, we'll delete the evaluation report. We're not gonna, according to my idea right now, we won't make it, put in a, a yearly report how it's doing. I was talking to the city manager today about this and you know, he made a comment the, um, what's it called, the, the being the pudding, you know, if we don't see any shopping carts on the street, the proof of being the pudding. If the shopping carts, the abandoned shopping carts are decreasing, obviously it's working. Um, fees, no fees for you. You submit your plan, there's no fee when you submit it. Um, modifications to the plan, you leave that portion in there. If you currently are going on picking up your own, but you want to put up a perimeter, Okay, you modify your plan. Just let us know what you're going to be doing. You're not going to be picking up, you've got your, your automatic barrier over there. You have no fee for that. Um, on the next page, re, uh, renewal and exemption. It says, um, the director, okay, so we'll delete that portion. It says, any owner granted an exemption from the recruitment plan shall file with the director a written application for one year of renewal. I don't know why it's only one year. If, you, if you're going to change it, change it, and then you don't have to re renew it after every year. It's just automatic forever. Okay, so the penalty phase, where it was $1,000. Remember, the city manager says, 
we hope we never institute this fee. It was only for the person that just snubs their nose and says we're not going to do anything about it and their carts are all over the place. So I'd like that paragraph to say any person who violates any provision of the chapter shall be charged with a misdemeanor punishable by, you know, this is if they don't submit it, okay, $100 a month until they submit their plan, okay. Um, if they do not submit a plan, they pay us, they, they're going to be charged or fine $100 until they uh, submit that plan to us. Um, number B. Are, are you leaving the word misdemeanor in there? Um, any person violates this, uh, I guess, I'm, we'll leave that with, um, that with I guess, that's, that's chapter 24. Yeah, I guess we'll leave it in there. Now, we, we can just change that to say if you don't have a plan, okay, so penalties and failure to submit. If you don't have a plan, you can be charged $100 a month. If that's all that really needs to say. If you don't have to say they're violating uh, the code or anything like that. Just $100 a month. Okay, the last paragraph there, item B, it shall be unlawful for businesses knowingly to have on the premises of other customers shopping carts. And this is what I think Mr. Mr. Seamus, let's delete that. That's, you know, why should George Allen be responsible for Kmart's, we don't have Kmart's, I think of it, our Walmart's shopping carts. Okay, the first paragraph in my ordinance, I'd like to see this would be on the top of page eight. Removal of our possession of the shopping cart is unlawful. So, it would just be the first paragraph. It would be, it is unlawful for any person to remove or possess any shopping cart outside the business premises of the shopping cart's owner or provided without the express written permission consent of the owner as provided, okay? So, you've got, we're going to say post your signs over there saying that it is a it is against the law it is a misdemeanor and um we're going to put it on there that it is against the law i'd like to see that number one now this is where we take a little bit of responsibility and we put some responsibility on our police officers or i'm, I'm asking them to do it i don't want them to like i say they have to call an extra crew today but our police officers really know the habitual people. We, we know the habitual drug addict. We know the habitual uh, homeless person. We know if we see someone that is a cons consistent violator of this ordinance, they stop and say, hey, you know this is against the law. Okay. And issue a warning. You know, hey, you can't do it anymore. You know, take the shopping cart back or unload your groceries, take it back. But if you see that person every single day, um, then that person, if they're not going to be doing anything. That person that continue to take the cards. Yes, um, they should have a citation, and it would be um, it would be the same as stealing a bicycle. It's uh, Penal Code 488, petty theft. Um, they're released. Uh, they're not released. They're not put in jail or anything. They're issued a small citation. I don't know what the charge of that citation is. Penal Code 488 can't be very much. But this is a person that habitually abuses it. And I think our police officers will know who they are. Um, businesses without shopping carts, just eliminate that. Why should um, I don't know, a barbershop be responsible for grocery outlets shopping carts being on the premises? You know, so yeah, we don't want to do that. So we eliminate that paragraph there with. Um, That's what I was talking about when I mentioned. Yeah, so we'll eliminate that. We'll eliminate that. Okay, so. In essence, all we're going to be doing, if we were to pass this version of it tonight, we'd ask you to submit a plan. What's your plan? How are you going to keep the shopping carts off the streets, okay? Or how are you going to retrieve them? Um, grocery Rock has their plan already done. They go and pick them up. Bang, they're done. Okay, you don't have to pay any fee for that. Um, you don't have to renew it every single year. Um, but we'll be able to tell if it's, if we'll be able to tell if it's working if we see a bunch of carts out there. Make it real simple. You have some responsibility, you submit the plan, and then you fulfill your plan, okay? Um, if you have no plan, if you, if you refuse to submit a plan, then we can find you $100 a month until you do submit the plan. The person that takes the cart, if they're a habitual abuser of it, if they habitually take the cart, um, after kind warnings, 
after um, reminders, then a citation, um, it'll be Penal Code 48. So. Okay, so, which, and then this is the other thing I'd like to see if we, if we go with this version of it. I'd like to have us review this in six months or a year, wherever we want, to see if it's working. If it's not working, okay, eliminate this or go with something different. But there is a problem with shopping carts. I know the one gentleman, I'm sorry, are you still here? Okay, yes. I know you're right. I can, I can avoid it as well, but there is a problem. And they are hazards to some people. Um, kids playing with them, they see them on the street, and they push each other up and down the hill. So they, they, are, they are a hazard, so we, we want to address it. And like I say, it's, it's already being addressed. Ever since we came up with this ordinance a month ago, it's getting better. We have people, we have community members wanting to pick them up, just as I was, who mentioned it on, on Facebook, they showed it. So community can, can get involved in it, help, help uh, recover the carts. The um, store owners can get involved, the city will get involved. It is, would be a community event trying to get rid of it. I'm proud of our city, but we want to keep it looking clean. Uh, we don't want the carts all over the place. And there's sometimes, you all, you've all seen them, seen them when there's five, six, seven of them all stacked up and they're just shoved into a parking lot. Okay, um, would you guys like to talk first or can I get the proper up and the other property I'm just seeing their ideas? I just have a simple question. Go ahead. Go ahead. How do you know whose carts they are if you're taking up the identification sign? Yeah. Okay, this, like I say, if we see carts out there, this is this plan, Mr. Crocker said he doesn't, you know, it's, it's expensive to put these signs on there. So I'm saying, okay, don't. How, how does that one help with this? Does do all property owners or do all the carts have it, like some sort of identification on them? I don't know if a cart that doesn't have it on there. We have a logo. They'll have a logo and uh, most of the yeah. Come on up here. So I, what Mr. Drock was talking about is a special identifying tag with all this information. But yes, grocery outliners handle and everything. Right. Um, most of us that have carts know what our carts look like. Uh, most of our residents know which ones are our Geo, which was Walmart, uh, just by the color simply. We just, when I'm patrolling the alleys, I just look for red because nobody else has red handles and badges and anything else, but they are plastic with grocery outlet all over them. Uh, one issue we've experienced is people actually peeling off the, uh, the seat labels as well as the handle labels so that they become unidentified. And those ones, if I find them out around town, I try to take those and we can order additional handles and things to get repaired. But uh, they do have a little bit of anything on there. Let me ask you, now, what I just presented, would that work for you? Because you, you've already taken care of it. All you're doing is presenting the plan. And I think that everything you're saying is exactly what we've been talking about since two weeks ago and, and uh, over the last two weeks with, with a number of you through emails or, or direct personal uh, communication. I'm just, I'm wondering why it's taken a month to to work with the community and the business owners to get this plan figured out when initially um, it was just brought up uh, without any regards to us. And, and I appreciate what we're doing right now, but. I would need to see formal document put together before anything is agreed upon. Sure. And even sure. from there, there may be additional issues and questions with it. With, with the things that you're saying right now, the big idea of it sounds okay. But there has to be actual language involved that I would have to read because it sets a precedent. Whatever gets put in there is, is official. You're right. So if the council agrees to something like this, um, it would come back for another, well, we get you involved in it. Okay, I promise you we get you involved. That's what I think. At least mean. you and the other gentleman. I've, I've been <coughs> yeah. um, if, if we just want to vote on a, on a rework, right, and then from there we can work with the local business owners that, that do have these cards, and then bring something formal that everybody's not saying, I don't think we're going to encounter any resistance at all. Okay, Mr. Crocker, what I'm trying to avoid, see that most of the things that came forward was making the responsible to all the cities, providing alternate transportation, um, buying carts and give, if, even if we bought carts, those carts would be abandoned as well. Um, I think there has to be some responsibility on you as a business owner. To go pick them up. To go pick them up, yes. 
Um, it shouldn't be all on the city. And our police department is way too busy to be out there retrieving all of your cars. So I don't want to do that. So I promise you that if we rework this, before it even comes back to the council, we'll get you involved in it. Okay, okay. I promise you that. But in general, what you heard, would that work for you? The vague idea of that? Yeah. Sure, but again, without any formal of thing, course, okay. yes, things that are being omitted are things that you took issue with, for sure. Uh, things that are still in there definitely make sense as far as having a plan, but uh, until any kind of formal documentation is, is yeah. presented. I, I'll make sure you can we need something. I, I really believe we need something. We can't just say forget about everything and let it go back to the way it was because whoever said there was 35 parts a week being picked up, um, I really believe there's more than 35 parts a week out of abandoned carts on our city streets. Well, I just wonder if 12 to 13 businesses are all contracted with this cart company, why do we have a problem? If it's just me, Home Depot, and I think one other listed uh, that are not contracted, and I pick up all mine, why do we have an issue being with? Well, but you had just made we do have an issue. Sure. So that's all I want to just, I want to address it. Okay. I don't think we can just put our head in the sand and ignore the problem we know exists, so. Well, I appreciate you okay. working at it. Hey, Bob, I have a question sure, for Mr. Crocker, sir, sure, if it's okay. okay. Um, and also for Joe. Um, Outside of an ordinance, our business licensing yearly, uh, is, that, is that one other avenue that can be taken? For instance, someone that had shopping carts as a question and submit a plan when we issue business licenses. Is that something on the questionnaire that could be addressed without an ordinance for them to submit a plan or a cart retrieval plan or something like that, okay, for businesses that do have carts? We have, what, 10 or 12 businesses in this town? What they have? We have 14? Is that what we have? 14. 14. Okay, well, whatever it is, is that a way of doing it without implementing a, a, a fine or a fee? Or Sounds like we could modify any questionnaire that we wanted to probably for a business the, the, the process that you're describing is a little more complicated than that. The, the city has two functions in, in uh, in reviewing businesses. There's the business licenses, which are permits that are issued to business, but not all businesses need a business license. The other thing that the city gets is a, and grants is a business tax certificate, right. which is basically just a receipt for having paid a business I got you. Um, tax. We can't condition that tax certificate on anything other than paying the tax, because it's not regulatory, it's revenue generating. So if you, you could, if you wanted to, implement a requirement that any business that, ha that uses shopping carts has to have a business license, a separate permit to be able to have shopping carts, then you could attach that condition to that. That's another fine of sorts, or a fee, correct? correct. Right. Another fee schedule. So basically the business tax certificate is not the avenue. Correct. Because what's going to happen here is what I'm thinking, if Mr. Parker was to sell his business or when he took over his business, Someone else would have to come and apply for another use, correct? For another another business tax. Another business tax, so that would trigger another plan, so to speak, to be submitted to the city, unless I'm mistaken. Okay, or does the existing plan? Not, not on the business tax certificate side. Not on the business tax certificate. Only on the business license, if you require businesses that have shopping carts to have to get business licenses to operate that shopping cart. So it's two separate. Yeah, I'm just trying to see how we can keep away from uh, seeing an ordinance. You know, seeing here that, you know, we have things that have been struck out by the mayor here. Employee training, mand mandatory cart retrieval, you know, we're going to take that out. An owner who fails to submit a plan, we're going to fine him $100 a month. Uh, I get that. What I'm trying to do is see what we can do to work with the businesses. I get it. Okay, obviously, Mr. Crocker, as you can see, it's a blight situation sometimes. Okay, it's not just a matter of the carts laying there, but it, it does add, you know, we have beautification committees and sure. commissions that, you know, they look for things that are, uh, you know, suffered from deferred maintenance and then the weeds and then the carts in between. So uh, I think that's what we're trying to address. Yeah. So that when we see a cart, we just don't leave it there, you know. Uh, I'm just wondering, you know, 
with the plan and having a phone number for the cart retrieval for people, you know, maybe we can all work hand in hand. I was trying to see without going through an ordinance uh, and, yeah. and a fine. I think that's what you guys would like to try and avoid also. Yep. And what I'm saying is you wouldn't find it. I mean, well, if they just snuck the well, there, is a fine. there is a fine that was in your proposal. I got it. There, we eliminate that fine. The only fine is if they completely do nothing. Make a hundred dollars a month until they at least come up with a plan. Yeah, and you know, maybe, uh, Mr. Lynn yeah. had this little um, idea on there. That's a plan, and that's a, that's a great idea. I don't know how much those things would cost, but it's a great idea. And you know, that would be your plan. You just put those up. I guess what, on there. what our goal here is also is to keep code enforcement uh, from adding to their workload, also. Okay? I believe that's part of it, or of maybe course. it's not, but we I'm not sure. Of course, we can. Yeah. I just never know, you know, so I have to ask whether... Come for Starbuck. Did you want to? This isn't towards Mr. Crocker, nor is it about the ordinance, about the process we're here. Next Tuesday, we're having a meeting about transparency. The city manager made a statement that some council members have been concerned about this. The attorney just made the same statement. I never heard about this ordinance until the last meeting. How did we even get here with this? It was never brought up as a council request. It was never put out on the dais. It, and now we're trying to shove an ordinance. Actually, it was a council request by Councilor Mosby and myself. When was this? I would gladly look this up. It's Actually, I didn't make a formal request. I happened to coincidentally be walking by and somebody was working on something because I was going to pose the question of making a council request. Okay. Well, okay. So, Councilor Mosby, I know I made a formal council request. Who was the third? Oh, I don't even know when it was, years ago, or not years ago, <laughs> it's been a while back. Yeah, but there was a formal request at a public meeting, and that's why... Review it sometime, please. Okay, how's our whole thing? It, it was briefly stated that possibly not all the carts are identifiable, and I think I've seen there's somebody with some black carts out there right now that don't have tagging on them, so maybe if... We have in here about your shopping cart identification. If the cart is readily identifiable, that they make it so. Because I think there are some mystery carts that are floating around. Um, it's not, and not all of them are tagged and bagged. There are some floaters. Come for Hong Kong. Uh, this came up about a month ago or so. I keep losing from the two two weeks at the time we have a meeting. And uh, I asked at that time, we should have a workshop just on this, just for the owners who have, have a concern. And that's what we have here tonight with, with the new uh, proposition Bob brought up. That needs to be looked at by all. I agree it was my choice. I'd like to have the chamber be there, let it take that on as an issue and come back with a recommendation from the chamber, which represents the business. Yeah. And I think that way, instead of the council meeting, then once the final document comes in, then we can have a uh, round of talk to the council meeting. Uh, you've got some good information. We can't do it tonight. We don't have to well, we can do it tonight. Yeah. I don't yeah. think we've got the that. Three of you, three of you, can authorize city staff to work with what I just read to you. Come up with a, a simplified version of this ordinance, and then I would meet or city staff would meet with Mr. Crocker and, this, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry uh, the other gentleman. Um, oh, my name is Mr. Randell. I, uh, I'm the owner of Walmart. Okay, okay, Walmart, okay. So I'm sorry. I have a lot of cards. Okay, so meet with at least the two of them since they're the only two at this meeting, but we can invite other people uh, to look at it with us. Um, okay, so that's all I'm asking is that we Realize there is an issue. This, and someone mentioned, you know, the only reason we want to pass this is because we spent a lot of money on it. Well, that's not the only reason we want to pass something. But there has been a lot of time and effort put into this. So why throw the entire thing out if there is some valuable information in it? Take out the portions that have been objected, bring it back, and let it be reviewed. And uh, then if at least these two gentlemen agree to it, 
um, bring back then the council for review publicly for everyone else to hear. That's all I'm asking. So I'm going to make that a motion that you allow city staff to work with my version that I just read to you. They can simplify this thing. I'll make sure that you two gentlemen get to see it before it's brought back to the council. And um, that's all I'm asking. So that's my motion. I'm not against the motion. I, I, I'll second it because I think you at least got it. A program set there, uh, but I, I do believe it's going to be. I, I still like to have the chamber involved because they're going to be representing all these people. We can, I can invite the chamber. Can invite invite the chamber. I think it should be, and make sure there's an invitation to every owner that has carts in town. And they've got to have another two bit. They're two bit free. And everybody talking about the shopping carts and all the stuff. One of the biggest problems we have on carts too is at 246 in the bridge. At night, when people walk across the bridge, you got a, you got these cards stacked up, and I think that's why we had to find a way to make sure we get on. Yeah, the day after we had our first meeting, I had there was seven cards piled up on the corner of A and Central. Never seen them there before, but all of a sudden they decided that's what they're going to stick them that night, and that was then they finally moved them here about a week ago. So I think we do need the ordinance. That there's some good parts of the ordinance that have been modified. I think get them out and have the chamber and then some of the other business involved so that when it comes to the council, it's going to have some recommendations from everybody in town and get in direction. Okay. So it's been moved in second. Oh, sorry, top room. Okay. I don't know if there was an addition on top of your motion about bringing all the players to the table. Yeah, no, no, well, I'll tell you what. These two gentlemen, this information has been it's been out there. There, there, are, there are people here that have cards as well. There are other yeah, hands. Yeah. I think it was another lady in the back had her as well to honor cards as well. So there are other people involved here. So okay. Yeah. Okay. We will send a notice out to the the list that's attached to the agenda, attached to your staff report. We will say that. If you're interested in reviewing a revised um, ordinance, come to City Hall at such and such a time and date. Okay. Would that satisfy everyone? Is everyone there? Are you on your list? Did you see it, the list here? Okay. Okay. Okay, so that'd be my motion and your seconding that. Okay. Any discussion? Move forward. And that passes to two. Okay. Okay, so staff, I will start working with you tomorrow on that. And it won't come back in two weeks, it'll be a little while. So we'll, we'll get in touch with everyone. Okay, thank you for, for all your participation.